Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of Expert Speaks. This is part two of our series on preparation for retired life. Today's topic is termed as financial freedom during your retired life and leading a good retired life. This is NRA Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan Bhatt, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype. Just the right advice. Dear viewers, this is part two on this series of preparations for retirement planning. If you have not watched the part one, I sincerely request you to watch part one and then watch part two. We'll be giving a link for you in the card section here above as well as in the description box for part one of this video. If you watch both these, you will get a complete information. The expert of the week is highly respected Mr. Gerard Colasso, who is a practitioner with more than four decades of experience, has helped thousands of families during these four decades to create a very safe, secure, retired life. Let's listen to what Mr. Gerard Colasso has for you in this episode. In this part of my presentation for senior citizens called Making Twilight Glow, I tackle investing for growth. And when we look at investing for growth, it is actually very simple. Equity and real estate are the only two avenues of investment that have consistently beaten inflation and increased the wealth of investors in the long run. And the long run is defined as 10 years or 10 year plus time horizons. So equity and real estate. Let's look at some of the returns on equity and real estate. The first date on which the Bombay Stock Exchange Sensitive Index was actually published was the 3rd of April, 1979. And the starting index was 124.15 points. Don't confuse it with the 100 points, which is the basic index. The first publication was at 124.15 on this date. Now, on the 5th of April 2024, the same index was 74,248 points. The period has been about 45 years. The compounded annualized returns have been 15.26%. The real estate market in the same period has grown by about 600 times. Of course, this is only my best estimate. Real estate is not like a stock. You can't get its value. Different pieces of real estate command different prices. Even two properties on the same road of the same city may not go at the same price. They may have, each property may have its own peculiarities. But very roughly, very roughly, if we are talking about a reasonably decent property with a good road approach, and here I'm not talking about apartments, I'm talking about only small plots of urban land. So let's get that definition correct. A small plot of urban land uh, with title clear, with a four-wheeler approach in any reasonably good city in India. The average appreciation has been about 600 times about the same returns as equity, but of course with much higher expenses. Never underestimate the way expenses on holding physical real estate can eat into your returns. You don't have any something in holding a mutual fund or in DMAT accounts. The expenses are minimal thanks to the marvelous advances that we have had, both in technology, in fund management, as well as the actions of regulators like SEBI in ensuring that investors get a more and more favorable and better deal. So here are the two growth investments. Now, what is the true hallmark of a growth investment? A growth investment is nothing more than what that word growth means. Your wealth actually grows. And how do you define growth? The return that you get should be more than the inflation rate. That's all. So if you take the Indian context, for example, if the returns that I'm getting are consistently less than the inflation rate, I am losing money. If the returns that I'm getting are roughly equal to the inflation rate, the value of my wealth is being maintained. If the returns I earn are more than the inflation rate, then I'm actually earning money. Now, since we got independence to today, the average CPI inflation rate in India at the consumer price index level has been between nine and nine and a half percent. So if you look at these figures now, you know that both equity and real estate have handsomely beaten inflation across decades. So people have actually become wealthy by investing in these two avenues 
of investment. A lot of people immediately ask me about gold. So let me answer that question. Timothy Green, a bullion expert, puts it beautifully. He says, the great strength of gold throughout history has not been that you make money by holding it, but rather that you do not lose. This is a beautiful saying. You don't make money. You don't lose. It gives you a return roughly equal to the inflation rate. And secondly, please understand that when we talk about investing in gold, we are only talking about investing in standard gold, gold in the form of coins, biscuits, bars, definitely not in jewelry. You are an out and out loser. So let's look at uh, our returns again. The Bombay Stock Exchange Sensitive Index, we have seen this when it started in 1979 versus 2024, period of 45 years, returns of 15.26%. Standard gold, 10 grams, 1979 was about 937 rupees. Uh, 2024, when we last checked, 71,290 rupees. Here's the compounded annualized growth rate, 10.10%. So in this period of 45 years, you are getting a return of slightly more than the inflation rate of 9 or 9.5%. Nine but in the long run, the historical returns tell us that the returns on gold roughly equal the inflation rate. So the value of your money is preserved. And especially if you have gold and you are paying capital gains on the sale of the gold, then of course that return comes down. Whereas you are paying capital gains even on equity mutual funds and stocks. But even after paying the capital gains tax, the long-term capital gains tax of 10%, you are going to beat inflation pretty handsomely. So here's a beautiful slide from the magazine The Economist. This is average real returns between 1900 and 2017. We are talking about 117 years there. So they have taken various assets from equities to wine, stamps, violins, global bonds, art, platinum, gold, silver, diamonds. 117 years, you invested in diamonds, you're an actual loser because these are real returns. Real returns are returns minus the inflation rate. Please note here, you may not be very impressed by the figures because you see the figures maximum is only a little more than 5%. It is 5% after the inflation rate. So this is a very, very important point to understand. So after inflation, silver gave you nothing for 117 years. Diamonds have led to an actual loss. Gold has given some returns, maybe 0.75% or so above the inflation rate. Platinum did better there, but you can see that nobody has come close to challenging the position of global equities. So when you talk about the normal investor, First and foremost, in today's day, when you've got well-regulated financial markets, it is much better to go for mutual funds. And in mutual funds, whether you're a senior citizen or not, you require very few categories. There are too many categories, too many kinds of mutual funds today. SEBI has done some good work in reducing the number of categories, but it can still be quite daunting for a normal investor. So let me uh, provide to you on just one page. What are the fund categories that you require? You require liquid funds, especially for your emergency fund. For regular returns, a mix of ultra short term money market and low duration funds. But when you become a resident Indian, just like all interest on bank deposits and small savings is going to be taxed for you, you are also going to be taxed on the returns that you get on this category of debt mutual funds. Therefore, you must look a little bit for conservative equity savings funds. Keep a little bit in debt funds, withdraw from it for two or three years, give the conservative equity savings funds a chance to grow and then start withdrawing from there. You'll find that it is very, very tax efficient. And finally, for growth, go for index funds. I'm a great believer in index funds. Index funds are the only funds that we invest in and that we advise our clients to invest in. All you need is probably a fund tracking the Nifty, the NSE 50 index, then the NSE Nifty Next 50 index, and a little bit in the NSE Midcap 150 index. With these three index funds, you are into India's top 250 companies. You really do not need to go beyond that. This is more than enough for successful and effective equity investment. Now, real estate is the only other avenue of investment that is a true growth investment. However, I'm not going to deal with real estate here for the simple reason I would not advise any retiree, anybody who's a senior citizen to invest in real estate for one simple reason. Real estate is not liquid. 
even in boom times you cannot sell or buy real estate at the press of a button the way you can do it in mutual funds or in uh, stocks it takes time and if there's no boom in the real estate market if you are in recession then sometimes even prime properties it is very difficult to sell so for senior citizens especially if you have got real estate leverage real estate try to earn from it and at the appropriate time pass it on to the next generation or sell it whichever suits your requirement the best the, all that is fine you can even use it if you are healthy you want to live there for a long time in your own piece of real estate please do so but making fresh commitments into real estate you are pouring money into essentially a, an investment that is not liquid so instead of that if at all you like real estate there are in india now slowly developing something called real estate mutual funds they are of course only purchasable on the stock market if you really want you can purchase a little bit there many of them are doing quite well but when you have a well diversified equity portfolio if you are holding between 100 and 250 stocks leading stocks in india via the index funds understand that you are already an investor in real estate you don't need further real estate why because all those companies of which you are a very small owner they own some form of real estate or the other and you have a tiny stake in that also in a very well diversified equity fund you will also be investing in stocks of certain real estate companies real estate promoters and other holders of real estate so automatically you are into real estate when you have a well diversified equity portfolio with this let me move on to my next topic why bother about growth investments you must bother about growth investments because of something called the retirement trap it is very important to understand this when i retire i feel happy i don't have to turn up for work i don't have to wish my superiors in the office nobody is going to shout at me even if i'm a few minutes late so i have a sense of freedom and then there's more good news many times i get retirement benefits into my bank account that makes me even happier here i am money coming in in lump sums then i don't have to turn up for work from the next day okay i'm feeling good i'm feeling good but what happens is 10 to 15 years later a lot of individuals who have not planned properly who have not put money in growth investments which beat inflation inflation beats their existing investments and when inflation beats their existing investments they start running out of money 10 15 20 years into retirement now supposing you run out of money when you are 75 what are you going to do at 60 given your experience and your expertise you might have been able to work for 5 or 10 years more even part time meaningfully but if you run out of money at 75 or 80 at that age are you going to look for a job so this is the retirement trap which we have seen a lot of people confronted with supposing someone is destined to live till 90 but runs out of money 75 or 80 i still have 10 or 15 years of life but now that life can be cut short because of the stress caused to me by a lack of money burton malkiel one of the finest writers of on investment whose book a random walk down wall street is one of the investment classics he says the risk in old age is not of premature death the risk is that you will live too long and outlive your assets very important two sentences to reflect upon so when we talk about financial freedom what is financial freedom charlie munger one of the most savvy investors and the partner of warren buffett he said i did not intend to get rich i wanted to get independent it's a beautiful saying to describe financial freedom that desire for independence the consequence was he built up enough wealth to always maintain that independence so what is financial freedom can you calculate it how much wealth should i build how do i know when i have achieved financial freedom hardly anyone answers these questions so i would like to give you a framework for calculating your own financial freedom first let's answer the question what is financial freedom financial freedom is when i work because i want to not because i have to if you understand this you have understood financial freedom the next question can you calculate what it takes in monetary terms to achieve financial freedom the answer is yes or another way to ask the question is can i know whether i can retire from an active working life once again the answer is yes what is the 
one measure that we have to take to calculate financial freedom. It is your normal monthly expenditure in retirement. So if you're asking the question today, can I retire today? Okay. If I shift back to India, I live in India. What is my normal monthly expenditure? If I'm living in my own house or apartment, fine. If I'm living in rented premises, the rent that I pay at the moment should be added to normal monthly expenditure. So once you know your normal living expenses, then the calculation becomes very, very simple. And the calculation is based on the what we call the withdrawal rate. Withdrawal from what? Withdrawal of from my total financial assets other than one residential house, if I own a residential house, and my emergency fund. How much of the value of these assets minus residential house minus emergency fund do I liquidate each year to meet expenses? Let's straight away answer this with an example. It will be very clear. In retirement, other than the value of my residential house and the value of my emergency fund, my total assets are 300 lakhs. I need 1 lakh per month to live. So withdrawal is 1 lakh per month or 12 lakhs per year. 12 lakhs divided by 300 lakhs expressed as a percentage is 4%. 12 lakhs is 4% of 300 lakhs. So of my 300 lakhs, I have withdrawn 4%. That is my withdrawal rate. Now, once we have understood the withdrawal rate, let us understand how to calculate financial freedom. So let us analyze withdrawal rates. When you withdraw 5% of your assets per annum, it is entry level, barely satisfactory. I would also say it's slightly unsatisfactory, but certainly better than not having assets. 4% of withdrawal from my assets would be satisfactory. 3% would be good. 2% would be financial freedom. Now, all these withdrawal rates we understand by very simple examples. My normal living expenses are 1 lakh rupees per month. The value of my financial assets, once again, please understand, I will not keep repeating this, but one last time, value of my financial assets minus or other than my emergency fund. And if I own a house, the value of my house is 240 lakhs. Withdrawal is 12 lakhs per annum because it's 1 lakh per month. 12 by 240, the withdrawal rate is 5%. 12 lakhs is 5% of 240 lakhs. Barely satisfactory. There's a chance that you can run out of money even if it is well invested. Now let's go for the 4% withdrawal rate. Normal living expenses 1 lakh per month. But here the value of financial assets is 300 lakhs, not 240 lakhs. I'm still withdrawing 12 lakhs per annum. 4% is my withdrawal rate. Satisfied. Next example, the 3% withdrawal rate, 1 lakh per month, 400 lakhs are my assets. When I withdraw 12 lakhs, 1% 1 of 400 is 4, so 3% is 12. The withdrawal rate is 3%. This is good. This is very good. Most of the people who have got a 3% withdrawal rate are unlikely to run out of money during their lifetime. Not only that, their assets will grow and slowly they will be able to withdraw. When I need not 12 lakhs, but I need now 15 lakhs per annum, you'll find that probably their assets have gone to 500 lakhs and therefore the rate still is very, very healthy. And finally, I need a lakh per month. The value of my financial assets is 6 crores or 600 lakhs. I'm withdrawing 12 lakhs per annum. Withdrawal rate is 2% because 12 lakhs is 2% of 600. This is what I would define as financial freedom. Such people are not only unlikely to run out of money during their lifetime, their assets will grow. And one day, they'll probably be able to leave substantial amounts to the people who come after them or to charity or to a mix of both. So it is possible to calculate financial freedom. Other people may have their own definitions of financial freedom. This has worked well for me across my almost four decades of work in the personal investment services field. So until you come across something better, you can probably use this as a reasonably good framework to figure out where you stand in the whole financial freedom game. But please understand the value of your emergency fund and the value of your house should not be included in these calculations. And the second thing is you must have your emergency fund. Your children must be financially independent when you retire. So now let me come to the concluding part of this presentation. There are things as we age beyond investment and finance. And as we age, we have to fall back or, or seek help from various sources. I divide this from what I've seen 
into two categories, personal backup and professional backup. Personal backup, somebody may have to help me someday. Whom do I have as family? Relations, friends and neighbors, senior citizen helplines, senior citizen associations and clubs, social service organizations, charities. If I have made a complete mess of my financial life, then my only fate will be to seek the last, that is some form of charity, somewhere where they will take me in without my having to pay them. But even if I've got good family relations, friends and neighbors, etc., I would not like to unnecessarily disturb them, even if I'm well off. So I must plan to go even beyond personal backup. But where trust is concerned, where other things are concerned, yes, it's immediately your family or some very good friends who are really interested in you. Joining senior citizen associations and clubs does help because very often such clubs and associations have tie-ups with physiotherapists, hospitals. I know some of our own acquaintances, some of them even aged 80 plus, who are members of senior citizen associations. And twice or thrice a week, they go to a hospital. There's a tie-up with a medical college. And there, they have physiotherapy sessions, either at a very low cost or sometimes even free. Because even the hospitals require patients to train their own students and others. And it has done good. It has done good to a lot of senior citizens. They get healthier. They get more active, which is very important. And they are in touch with the other club members. So you have people who are like you of the same age or little this side or that side, but you have somebody to talk to, somebody to converse with, some social interaction, which keeps you mentally stable and healthy. So you should be very clear about your personal backup. In fact, a good idea to write down under these categories, who are the closest people to you? What kind of resources do you have to back you up on the personal front? Then also professional backup. A few of these professions are of course pretty obvious. For example, doctors, lawyers, chartered accountants, investment advisors, insurance agents. You have a claim. A good agent will always help you with the claim till the very end. Do the paperwork because first of all, if we are not well and then there is no immediate family member to look after us there, we are entirely dependent on professionals. It will be very difficult for us to complete the formalities of a health insurance claim. That's where a good agent can help you. Property managers. Many times people do not have their property, but there's nobody to manage. So property managers are also, it's a, it's a very nascent kind of profession in India. But right now there are some low-key property managers who are coming into play. You'll of, of course have to, if you need them, uh, make inquiries and decide who is good. A lot of old people will encounter, so it is very good to have as your professional backup, also mental health professionals, whether they are medical doctors or therapists or otherwise. And then if there's no one to look after you, you must know whether you can shift into good assisted living centers. You also have a choice of if you want to stay at home, will there be full-time caregivers? There are caregiver service providers. So if you want to be looked after on a stay-at-home basis, then who are the caregivers? Are there nursing centers, if you require them, that provide round-the-clock nursing care, only nursing care? There are also professional visiting nurses who can come just to inject sometimes give you uh, IV antibiotics if that is required to do wound dressing for other kind of paramedical or medical or nursing care. There are professional visiting nurses. Physiotherapy has helped a lot of old people. I'm aware of it. It's a little difficult sometimes, but if you persevere at it, yes, then handyman. You may need people who want to repair. That's if you're living on your own, of course. You must have your own electricians, plumbers, others who can come and help you when needed. And uh, simple things like a few trusted and well-known either taxi or auto drivers, ambulance services. And then you must be very clear about if you need end-of-life care, what kind of end-of-life care do you need? Is it, will you need hospice care? Have you documented your personal and professional resources and informed those that matter about the same? Have you made a living will? Do you know what a living will is? It's good to get some information about it. A living will or an advanced medical directive only says that if you reach a certain health condition, then this is the kind of care I want. And more importantly, this is the kind of care that I do not want. For example, a lot of people do not want the purposeless prolonging of life. So endless keeping on life support, etc. 
uh, they may not want. That has to be stated. So from 2018 onwards in India, the Supreme Court has given some recognition to this whole concept of a living will. Of course, we are still in the very early stages. Later on, it was found too difficult. Then the Supreme Court itself, I think, made it a little easier. But it's a good idea to explore, understand what it is and understand the power that you have over your own end-of-life procedures and care. And this power has to be exercised not at that time, because at that time you are not capable of exercising it. It has to be exercised in advance. So those two words, in advance, are very important. Retirement planning has to be done in advance. End-of-life directives in the form of a living will have to be given in advance. This is very important. So I hope I have shed some light on a few important points for senior citizens or people slowly approaching retirement. And I wish all of you a very happy, a long, happy, productive, stress-free retired life. Thank you. Dear viewers, hope the video that is done and the inputs that you got from Mr. Gerard Colasso helped you to understand the preparatory steps, the care that you must take while preparing for your retired life. If it did give you the required inputs, do not forget to give me a thumbs up, uh, drop your comments and your views in the comment section below. Do not forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones, friends and relatives. And an appeal to all of you, your subscription matters. If you have not yet subscribed for this channel, press that subscribe button right now and do not forget to press on the bell icon as well. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another topic next Tuesday. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.